All rise, we will be. Please be seated. We have a Thank you very much, Mr. Kigen Katla. Please continue. Now, Mr. Witness, you said that Mr. Sang used the word Murkelda at the station, didn't you? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Witness, could you confirm if, according to you, Mr. Sang, if you heard that word for the first time from Mr. Sang or you had heard it before? I, I heard it first from Mr. Sang, Your Honor. Before that, you had never heard the word Murkelda? I'd never yawn. And Mr. Witness, is it true that there are people in Kalenjin community who are called Murkela? Yes, Your Honor, the, the Kipsiki community who have thinned it, Your Honor. So it's also, it is true that Kalenjins themselves use that word in description of the teeth, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Witness, outside using it, as a description of the teeth, isn't it also true that there are people whose official names is Murkelda? I've never had one, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Witness, when Sang used the word Murkelda according to you at the studio, if it was offensive, the way you described it, it would also have offended the Kipsigis who have uh, tinted teeth, as you say, isn't it? Your Honor, the Kipsigis understands Kalenjin language, and if they had Mr. Sang talking about Murugela or referring people about uh, on Murugelda, they could have known directly that he was referring to other people because they were listening to what he was saying. Now, Mr. Witness, you have used the word, the three words that you had used in the interview I just referred you to were Murkelda, which we've gone through, uh, weeds, and uh, captured it. And I want you to just confirm this to the court, that you explained to the prosecution why you consider those words to be, you were asked whether or not the words are bad, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Could you confirm this is what you told the prosecution as the reason why, according to you, those words are bad? That you said, you asked, I don't think it is a good thing because I cannot tell you now a sharpener. Or, or let me, the witness, I'll, ask if, I'll, I'll just take you through how the interview went. You asked whether you knew the exact meaning of capture lit, and then the interview went on to this effect. I don't think it is a good thing because I cannot tell you now a sharpener. Then he went on to say, that's not your name and you know exactly, and you exactly know my name. I know your name. You are called somebody and then I call you another name that's not yours. <laughs> I don't think that's good. Could you confirm that's the explanation you gave the prosecution? I confirm you on. Uh, and you confirm that your testimony uh, that the Kikuyus were abused by the use of the word Murkelda is on account of this explanation I've just read out, Mr. Witness, isn't it? Your Honor, the Kikuyus were not offended because maybe they didn't even know or hear what Joshua Sang was saying. But what I was trying to say is that Joshua Sang was trying to talk about the Kikuyus in a way that 
you, you was not direct saying that you could use, but you was using the names you own. Uh, Mr. Witness, my, my question is a bit different, if you could understand me. What I'm asking you, Mr. Witness, is the meaning that you, the explanation that you give that these words were bad is for the reason that somebody knows your name and uses another name, the way you've explained to the prosecution, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Witness, you said that Mr. Sang said that uh, the opportunity will be given to everybody to air their views, and you use the word a cow, did you, Mr. Witness? I didn't get you, Your Honor. Did you say that Mr. Sang said there is a cow to be milked in relation to, to giving opportunity to other political opinions and other politicians, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Could you explain again what you meant by that, Mr. Witness? Your Honor, I mean, I was talking about CASFM as a, a business <coughs> company of broadcasting. And Mr. Sang was talking about other people from other political pa parties who are coming to CASFM to wear or to sell their policies to the Kalenjin community. And I was saying that Mr. Joshua Sang welcomed them and after they left, he was explaining to the Kalenjin community that Cas FM is just a cow to be milked and let them come, sell their policies, but when they have gone, we know where our force could go to your own. According to you, this is what Mr. Sang said, and he said after the people who were being interviewed had left, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Witness, I want to play an audio where uh, the word cow in Kalijin is used. I want you to confirm if that is the audio that you listen to, and then I'll ask you a few questions. Uh, Your Honours, I would like us to go to tab, <coughs> tab 18, Your Honour. Yona, I am referring to audio reference KEN D11 013 0040 and the transcript D11 0013 0067. And I propose to. Uh, I'm sorry, court officer. The, the right uh, uh, number for the translation is KEN D11 Your Honor, I propose to play timestamp 44.25 to 46.16 initially for the witness. Your Honor, as that is being said, I request to give a copy of the translation, which has a transcript to the witness, so that you can follow uh, as uh, the audio is playing.
Your Honours, in our bundle, tab 18, it is at page 33, and the particular reference is Ken D11-013-0122. I apologize to the court officer, but I would request her to assist me uh, have the witness look at that particular page, page, 30, page 33. Now, Mr. Witness, if you are at page 33, we will play the audio. If you could attempt to follow what is being said on the audio against the, what is typed, uh, and then I'll ask you a few questions. Is that okay, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. The original is the same. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes, you can sit on the on the on the on the document you have it with you. Yes, Your Honor. I will go on. Ah, go on, go. We be seeker up. Jita, we love you. We got PNU. Mr. Witness, could you confirm if you recognize the voice of the person who has just started talking? I recognize the voice of Joshua Sangyon. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Uh, I would uh, request you to listen to the rest of what he says. Tay <laughs> Gunjo ko mga akin ako masta na niya. Sumut tayo ko marir tayo na gulay. Kusir, awgyo tiki eksak. Anang go butje, amu mama may joga sa. Tuos pa iman ko nagi miu sa abit kaya gusto ko stay kyo. Aso mga gitu. Mo imge, mo imge. Gunta kiy tulgu yaka mo ajigo lagi kaya tulgu milinga ako nem jigo rehat ng lalay. Tuko milalay kam sa. Mr. Witness, so that the rest of the court is with us. I will read the English translation of what you've just listened and request you to confirm if that's a fair translation of what you've had. Do you understand, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Just before you, Honor, can we just have the exact reference for the translation and the bundle, the number, uh, the tab number for the translation as well? Yeah, it's okay. I can give again. It is Ken D11. It's tab 18. Ken D11. Zero zero one three zero one two two. Now, Mr. Witness, confirm this is what the translation. This is the English translation of what you've just heard. Hello, Arab son. Arab Undi from Capsete. The thing I would like to ask you, Kirwa, is how can how can relax, yet we are suffering? It's so irritating when you say that let him go back again. Ask him if he's our original Kalenjin or you are just taking back this government. So, Arab Sang, I have thought that those who are in PNU should join us. It's really a waste. Uh, can you, have you seen that, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. And could you confirm for the court's record 
that this is a caller calling into the program, Lene Emet, and raising those concerns. Yes, Your Honor. And then I'll read how Mr. Sang reacts, and this is what he says. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arab. Uh, someone says... Is there any issue about the accuracy of the uh, translation? Uh, Your Honor, considering the questions I want to ask the witness, I would be happier if he himself satisfies himself that the Kalenjin the translation of the Kalenjin uh, audio is a fair translation, so, so that when I ask him the questions, it, we, we, are, we, are, we are operating from the same place. That's exactly what I'm saying. When are you going to ask him that question? Yona, the other concern I have is that I would like also the translation to go on record. I don't know how else I would do that, uh, other than having either to read it or to have the witness read it, and I thought it would be faster if I read it. You already read it. What I'm asking is whether you want to have the witness confirm that that is a fair translation of the challenging um, words we heard. Mr. President, I can do that again. I just asked him the first part and he says it's okay. I wanted to go page by, uh, paragraph by paragraph with your permission, right. if, if that's okay with your honor. Did he say I must have missed it? May I, may I ask him again, your honor? Uh, yes. Whether what you just read out in English is a fair translation of what appears above in Kalenjin. Uh, uh, Mr. Witness, I've just read out in English, uh, I've read out a translation in English of what we just listened to, and, and I wanted to ask you, is, a, is it a fair translation of what you had in Kalenjin and what is transcripted on the document I gave you? Yes, Your Honor. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. Now, I want to read the, part, the response of Mr. Sang, and then I'll ask you again if it's a fair translation of what Mr. Sang says. Is that okay, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. This is what Mr. Sang says. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Arab. Uh, someone says he does not want the PNU people. So this is what I'm saying. Some people have just bought to talk, but we will listen to them. We are in the lake but do not let your heart get disturbed. The ODM team will be here tomorrow to tell us their manifesto. On Monday, we will host the UDM guys. So us, we will stand and listen to our people, wherever they are. Politics aside, we will be looking for where the truth of people lies. Uh, Mr. Witness, uh, you've seen that, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Is it a fair translation of what you just listened in Kalenjin, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. In fairness to you, Mr. Witness, you will also confirm that there is the use, as I'm instructed, of the word cow in the Kalenjin fashion that you just listened to, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. You will also confirm that, in fact, that word may not have been used in the English translation but it is a general fair translation of what you had, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Mr. Witness. <coughs> the last bit of Mr. what... Mr. Keegan Cartwell, so we are clear on the point about cows. Are you saying that the word cow appears in the Kalenjin version but does not appear in the English translation? Yes, Your Honor. I, I wish to make that concession. Um, we, we, can you point out the, the phrasing that can, uh, where the word cow in Kalenjin appears? I, I can, Your Honor, uh, presumably through the witness. Fair enough. Uh, Mr. Witness, um, on your left column, you will see on top of the page, Sang, you can see that. And then you see translation, then column number one. You can see that, Mr. Witness. Yes, Your Honor. Then you can see transcription, translation, then transcription, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Now, from where I've reached, I want you to count four lines, uh, and then we will read the sentence that has the word cow. Can you see where it starts with the word, with the word A-K-O, 
Then the second word is K O R A. Can you see that, Mr. Witness? In the Kalenjin uh, transcription. You can read it a bit and then I will understand where you are. Your... For the court, it is at the exactly line six after the word, the third, the second transcription. It says, Mr. President, am I allowed to read in, or should I play the, the, the audio? Uh, why don't you read the text? We can start with that. And we can spell it out, because it might be a matter if you spoke it, uh, the transcript will get it, since the transcript is not capturing audio uh, plays. I notice, Mr. President, that you are presuming I speak that dialect. You have spoken it in the past, so that <coughs> must be a fair presumption. I will read it, Mr. President. Akokora i tanyi komeje ke pai komeje ke komeje kwai ne mi ngale kora yu ak ne ak ne komangen sene ma muji ama yotok missing. Lagi ni kalian kitjo, i, mai 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 Now, Mr. Witness, can you see that the word cow has been used in that sentence? Yes, Your Honor. Could you tell the court what is the word for the cow in that sentence? It, it meant kasefem, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Witness. Not, that's not what I'm asking you. From the text of the passage, can you see the equivalent of the word cow? Yes, Your Honor. Tanyi. Could you spell it for the court record, Mr. Whitney? P-A-N-Y-I, Your Honor. That will be the fourth word in from line six. That's true, Your Honor. Thank you. Now, Mr. Witness, I want you to go to page 34. Can you go there if you don't mind? EVD number is Ken D eleven zero zero one three zero one two three. Mr. Witness, confirm that what I'm reading is a translation, a fair translation of what you had in Kalenjin and what is transcripted there. Are you at page thirty four, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. So if there are people like him. Let them come and present their view so that tomorrow they would not blame us that we did not give them chance, or when we are defeated, they will say we did not listen to them. Is it the truth? That is why we are here, our listeners. Do not get disturbed. Do not get disturbed. If you have decided they have, if, if you have decided the way someone has put, no one will remove your, your foot from your pocket, it is still there. Can you see that, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Could you confirm that's a fair translation of what was you had in Carlingen and what's transcripted? Yes, Your Honor. <coughs> now, Mr. Witness, is this the audio that you were referring to yesterday when you testified and said Sang talked that other parties and CASFM have a relationship like a cow and a situation of milking, Mr. Witness? No, Your Honor. Sang used the word cow in many occasions. That was not the one I was saying, Your Honor. All right, counsel, please. Um, now, I thought you were going to get a witness to uh, tell us what sentence the sentence translates into, a sentence that contained the word cow that you read in. Um, 
Mr. Kinkat, well, you can put it directly to the witness. It might be easier to tell the witness this is what it means, isn't it? Mr. Witness, the paragraph that I read and the one you said you were able to locate, making reference to a cow, could you confirm that what Mr. Sang is saying is that the cow needs to be fed? Or could you confirm that's what he said? I confirm, Your Honor. Okay, Mr. Witness. Now, I was asking you whether this is the audio you are referring to yesterday, and you are explaining that Mr. Sang used the phrase cow several times, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Could you just confirm that your explanation to the court of the word of the use of the word cow by Mr. Sang is consistent with this audio you just listened to? Your Honor, the word cow, Joshua Sang was referring to KSFM as a cow, which needs to be fed, to be fed Your Honor. And Mr. Witness, do you understand this audio to be saying exactly the same? Because that's Mr. Sang's position, that that's exactly what he meant. He said so, Your Honor. And is this one of the audios that you had? You said he used it several times. Is this one of the audios that you had, Mr. Sang, using the phrase cow? I don't remember if I had it, but for now I had used the term cow again, Your Honor. So what you say, Mr. Sang, is saying in the passage that defense counsel read out means that Cas FM is a cow that needs to be fed. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, at this point, I would request that the audio I've just referred to be put in as a defense, Mr. Sang's defense exhibit. And the prosecution objects to that. I think we've gone through this uh, various times in the past, and the court's rulings have been clear. If the witness in this type of evidence, whether it be a video or an audio, if the witness is not able to confirm that this is something that he heard in the past live on the radio, then we've been continuously and systematically giving those audio and the translation and transcript MFI numbers. That's exactly what has happened, and I can refer the chamber to transcript 49, where the chamber deals with the video, and the chamber explicitly states that if the witness had confirmed seeing it or if the prosecution agreed to that, then it would be given an EVD number and not an MFI. The, the issue, what's at issue here is what, if the, the, vi the audio that has been put to the witness is what it purports to be a broadcast or a live broadcast that was broadcasted at one point is really what it is, and the witness has not been able to give any evidence in that regard. So on those bases, I think that it should be maintained as simply an MFI for the moment. Response? Uh, Mr. President, we would insist on uh, our request to have it produced. Uh, the first thing I would like to say is that the witness has confirmed that the substance of what he had is consistent with the testimony that he adduced, and which we concede, Mr. President, for the record that Mr. Sang used to that expression. Secondly, Your Honours, Mr. The witness confirms that he recognizes Mr. Sang's voice in this instance, and which has a very direct bearing on the testimony adduced. Thirdly, Your Honours, we have put in at tab four a confirmation from the station, CAS FM station, which kept the records of these audios, confirming that in fact this audio was, was aired on the day that we have indicated it was aired, being the 28th November 2007. Uh, lastly, Honours, it will be recalled that the witness said that these events took place, or this audio <coughs> and the substance of what he alleged was made in the year 2007. And that is exactly the same period that this audio, as we contend, was aired and was confirmed by CASFM. For all those reasons, uh, Your Honours, 
we submit that there is a nexus between this witness and the audio, which the witness has been able to recognize at least the elements of his testimony and the, Mr. Sang's uh, voice. Uh, and secondly, that uh, it has been verified by uh, the custodians of the audio. Uh, Mr. President, we pray that the audio be admitted as a, an exhibit together with the translation and the transcription. If I may, Your Honor, the uh, information or the affidavit that we see at tab four is completely inadmissible at this point. The defense counsel will have to lead evidence of this affidavit, bring the person who has signed the affidavit. I understand it's a Mr. Lamoan, Julius Lamoan from uh, CAS FM, or Cali Company Limited. The defense counsel cannot simply lead into evidence an affidavit of a witness who has not come to court to testify, especially during the prosecution's case. So I don't think that the court can take into consideration any of the information that's written down in this affidavit. As for this uh, question of the witness <coughs> being able to identify the voice of Joshua Sang, we've already gone through this type of uh, debate in the past regarding other videos and other audio recordings. And the Chamber's decision has always been clear. Transcript 49, page 102, is the Chamber's decision regarding a video. Now, the Chamber's decision is clear in that it states that if the witness is not able to give any evidence as to the authenticity, which is basically has he heard it in this case in the past, then it should not be admissible as an EBD number but as an MFI. Can you read exactly the ruling of the Chamber on the occasion, word for word? Yes, indeed, Your Honor. So it's a transcript 49, page 102, lines 9 to 12. The chamber states and held, the difficulty in this case is the witness saying she did not see these materials at the time or these videos at the time. That's what makes the difference. If she had seen them or agreed, the chamber would have been inclined to treat these videos as was done in the past. So on that basis, the videos will be marked MFI. So these were, in, in this case, it was a question of videos. But in the case, and I suggest to the, and I submit to the chamber, that in the case of the audio, we've also applied the same uh, reasoning. If the witness is not able to speak as to the authenticity of an audio recording uh, by stating in this type of case that he's heard it in the past and he's heard it live on, as a broadcast on CAS FM, then it should only begin an, an MFI because the main problem and what's at issue is the authenticity. Is the audio recording uh, authentic? Is it something that was honestly uh, broadcasted at a certain point in time? And there is absolutely no evidence on this point from this witness. The witness says clearly it is not the audio that he heard. He says yes, they are speaking about similar things, but it's not the one. That's what we have on record for the moment. Uh, Mr. President, uh, if I could uh, address this issue because it deals with also a, a issue of principle. It's our respectful submission that the scheme under the Rome Statute is not one that um, puts in strict rules of admissibility. Indeed, the converse, the principle is in favor of the free admissibility uh, coming before the chamber with clear safeguards that there must be sufficient indicia of reliability and a prima facie showing of relevance. Uh, Your Honor, my learned friend, of course, has uh, spoken to uh, affidavits, of course. That is something, uh, the nature of the evidence, the prima facie um, content uh, of what was played uh, seems to me to be clearly relevant. Um, coupled with the affidavit, we say there are sufficient indicia of reliability. And so there should be no prohibition as a matter of principle with simply giving it an exhibit number. Of course, this is not conclusive as to authenticity. It's not conclusive as to veracity. And it's without prejudice for the prosecution to bring any evidence in rebuttal. And of course, the defense, if the defense wish any evidence to be given uh, proper weight, it would be appropriate in, uh, to, to bolster it uh, where necessary. But, Your Honor, that needn't be done at the outset when one is seeking admissibility. Um, the prosecution, in my respectful submission, um, has disclosed, of course, a, a understandable, but I would say misplaced opposition to defense documents and defense evidence that's been used in these proceedings from being assigned exhibit numbers. 
Your Honour, a time may come, of course, where the defence say there's no case to answer. Uh, that's not a theoretical possibility. We have a, a right to make a submission of no case to answer. But we're not doing that now. So can you speak? No, Your Honour. So, so, Your Honour, as we say, as a matter of principle, it's a, it, it is for the bench to decide whether or not evidence is admissible. The test for that should be relevance, that's made out, and indicia of reliability, not conclusive proof. And, Your Honour, as we say, if that's made out, it should be admissible. But one can't say uh, that uh, evidence can't be admitted simply because it's not definitively proved. Uh, that is a license for the, to prevent the defence effectively from getting evidence in um, until a defence case. All right, Mr. Sam, we'll leave it there. Uh, Your Honour, <coughs> can I say one additional thing? Uh, a factor that may militate in favour of the argument put forward is sometimes it's, it's simpler to put evidence in and quicker and more expedient and fairer in this stage rather than calling 100 or 150 defence witnesses later on if that's necessary. Your Honour, I'm most grateful. Mr. Kigen Kappa, you have referred to the affidavit <coughs> appearing at type 4. Yes, Mr. President. I see that this affidavit is a list of items that runs to, would it be 74 items? Yes, Mr. President, and that particular item we are referring to is in that affidavit as item number Item number 29, Your Honours. Item number 29, at reference Ken D11-0013-0073. Uh, Mr. President, uh, the link is in the sense that uh, if you see the first column, Mr. President, it indicates uh, the item. The second column is the date of the audio, which is exactly the same date that uh, the document I've just referred to and the audio I've just referred to relates to the 28th of November 2007. At it, and it relates to an interview between one Mr. Joshua Sang and William Kiriwa, which is exactly the content of that audio. And lastly, it relates to an opportunity given to a political party called PNU to come and sell what they stand for as a political party, and which is exactly the event that, is, uh, that obtains on the audio. Um, at, at this stage, we are dealing with the audio, not just the transcript. Yes, yes, Mr. President, and I'm happy enough if, we, if the audio could go in. Um, the audio is the source information that generated or from which the transcripts were generated, isn't it? Absolutely, Mr. President, so yes. that's what we, our main focus now is the audio. Yes, Mr. President. All right. Uh, Mr. President, with your permission, may I say two things uh, in reaction to what Mr. Lucia said? Uh, before you do that, I, I want us to see how we sufficiently tie the audio to item 29. Uh, Mr. President, I can... Uh, without producing who it is that says this is from our record. Um, this is the audio... I'm identifying the audio, and it came from our ordinary record, or from our archives. How do we do that now? Mr. President, I understand the question to be that you want me to demonstrate that there is a relationship between the audio that I propose to produce and the item number 29 in tab 4. Yes, for purposes of deriving sufficient cover under the affidavit. 
I am happy to do that, Mr. President, through the witness, if that's okay. All right. Now, Mr. Witness, I would request that um, I play out for you another part of the same audio, and uh, then I'll ask you a few questions, uh, Mr. Witness. I would like to play uh, timestamp 00 to 100. Zero minutes, uh, zero seconds to one minute. And that, for the court officer, is in Ken D11-013-091. Uh, and as that is being said, Mr. Witness, uh, you can look at the document you've just been given, uh, page 2. You are page 2, Mr. Witness. Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Witness, just briefly before I ask you to listen to the audio and uh, ask you a few questions, uh, could you confirm uh, that in your testimony to the prosecution, you made reference to KSFM as a radio station and some of the people you know work there? Yes, Your Honor. Could you confirm if you know the chief executive of KSFM? You know another name at the KSFM, the, do, do you know anybody else at the management level? I know Joshua Lamaunion. I don't know if the other name is Joshua, but Lamaunion. Would you be saying Julius Lamaun, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Witness, I want to play out for you uh, timestamp 00 to 100, and if you could very kindly just look from the top, Mr. Witness, the, you, 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 you can see that, Mr. Witness. Kine kimo kine 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 shek mo te me tai. Kumbeje kaya nai gumye ake, wewe gumye ake bigap college in kele, anu le anyin, anu le gararan, anu le gimo kine kine. Kuguna ta oso mega sarta, asakabi tiep chit, aki Mr. Witness, can you recognize the voice of the person speaking? Joshua Sangyon. And are you able to locate from the transcript what is, uh, where he's speaking? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Let's just go on listening. Kaskora, come on, sweet. Tugul, sit down, go stay here. Kaitarigi noto, abotia loya to lootile, ole kaole yu. Tachi kumang, kure ni chukung chong de chukumang. Kuya to le tulugi le katachi gano, big chok, ingserga le tingro, ako tipto ano, ako ene. Kumi chaka kasingji minguni, amu yaso kora kumi biki le ngi bakitena. Kumi chaka tipki le yichu to moyo le bakitena. Ko engorne, chimo yako ra gule na jaga ko DM tosha, ko DM tosha engorne. Aje kitu kiko guaje ije kiko guaje na ba soko bet kong halal ing halal lagi nye tachi kong halal lagi je kegas kos tei kio kuinglet ang kenal le tu mage bergura ama miji no agu tut kure ya ting lolly ngung halal le nigit kio ugu no tei gas tachi tu ni biju tu kure ya tarik tip temak tesap ibir kusup ke ak naet nawa inyuru kuing studium bet Kapra lagi tinjau yang gembira semua ini kerja orang dua orang ing purgi tap kolingin aku agen geng pik cegi nyor borang itu kau boleh sihat ing serga ini meeting guni nebo presiden mahai kebaki kau ini anda mesmiu William Arab Kirwa karibu kongga Arab sang agalan jam geng pik cak tu gul coba kali ini gul tu gul oleh meeting pik cak coba nomor gusi jam geng tu gul kongga missing itu agak ing studio now, Mr. Witness, uh, I will start by asking you to confirm if the English translation of what you've heard is correct. And could you confirm this is what Mr. Sang says? Seventh, we are going to decide what we want in coming five years. 
So we need to do keen soul searching as Carlingian community so that we can know which side is sweet, which side is good, on which side do we want to be, on what matter, on that matter, I would like to request you as listeners to listen to all sides so that when the time comes, you will be able to make the right decision through a large photo turnout that will define general direction for our people. In which government, how they will stay, and <coughs> what they will be doing. Therefore, we want to listen to the current situation as there are those saying Kibaki Tena. So we want to ask ourselves that those who are saying Kibaki Tena are saying it in which way? Similarly, those who are saying ODM Tosha are they saying so for what reason? Uh, Mr. Witness, could you confirm that what I've just read is a fair translation of the first paragraph of the transcription? I confirm, Your Honor. Uh, for the court record, that is Ken D11 0013 0091. Mr. Witness, I will read the translation of the second part, and this is what it states. Our task is to give them a chance to present their views for us to present ours. This is just talking. No one is going to forcefully remove your fault from your pocket. Therefore, let us just listen so that on 27th December, we will vote according to knowledge you have acquired. Could you confirm that's a fair translation, Mr. Witness? I confirm, Your Honor. <coughs> then the next one is, so in the studio today, we have one of our <coughs> own professionals and a leader in the Kalenjin community. He is one of those who got a chance to serve in the current government under President Kipake. That is Honorable William Arab Kirwa. Welcome. Could you confirm that's a fair translation, Mr. Witness? I confirm, Your Honor. Lastly, Mr. Witness, uh, this statement is made. Thank you, Arab Sang. I would like to say hi to all Kalenjin people wherever they are, my people from Murkusi. Hi to all of you. Can you see that, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. You confirm it's a fair translation of what is in English? It's fair, Your Honor. For the court record, that is... Ken D11 0013 Now, Mr. Witness, you have already confirmed to us that you recognized the, the voice of Mr. Joshua Arab Sang. Uh, you've also seen reference to one Honorable William Arab Kirwa. Can you see that, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Do you know him, Mr. Witness? I had him during 2007, Your Honor, but I don't know him personally, Your Honor. So you know him by reputation, but you don't have personal knowledge of that individual? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Witness, are you in a position to confirm that the voice you heard at page 3, Ken D11 0013 is the voice of that Mr. William Kirwa, who you said you've heard in the past in the year 2007? I don't recall his voice, Your Honor. I can't confirm, Your Honor. Witness, did you listen to that broadcast at the time? I don't remember listening to that program, Your Honor. Mr. King Katwa. Uh, With your permission, may I ask just a question related to what you've just asked, Mr. President? Fair enough. Mr. Witness, this would be about the third time when you are being asked whether you listen to that program and you say you don't recall. You, isn't it, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. May I understand the sense in which you say you don't recall? Is it in the sense that you may have heard it but can't quite remember? whether it's exactly the same one. Yes, Your, Your Honor, I might have heard it, but I, I might not remember for now. May I ask you, Mr. Witness, and it borders, it borders on repetition, but may I ask you, 
the substance of what Mr. Sang says in terms of cows is the sense in which you were adducing evidence yesterday about what Mr. Sang was saying, isn't it? Your Honor, I've said that Mr. Sang used the word cow in different days during 2007. And what he was saying here, he was the only meaning that I understand is the same is about CASFM as a business company. But it doesn't mean that because I've read or I've listened to him, it doesn't mean that the word which has used cow means the, the, that the whole audio which he said was only for that day. But the word cow, the same same thing, it was meaning CASFM has to be paid so as to hear. All right, thank you. One second. We will admit the audio and the translations, uh, the witnesses' clarification that there is an identity of concepts between what he testified to before in the sense of um, CAS FM being a cow is sufficient to warrant admission of the evidence at this stage. Thank you very much, Your Honours. Thank you, Mr. President. The audio can D11-0013-0040. will bear the following number, EVD-T-D11-00020. And will also be referenced as Sang Defense Exhibit Number 20. Its translation, Ken D11-0013-0090, will bear the following number, EVD-T-D11-0002. And will also be referenced as Sang Defense Exhibit Number 21. Both items will be registered as public. Thank you. Now, Mr. Witness, I will take you back to the first audio that we played, which is at page 33. And that is Ken D11-013-0122. Mr. Witness, could you confirm uh, that from the playing of that video, uh, audio, sorry, and what you had, it is true that the caller called when, the, when Mr. William Kirwa was still at the studio making his presentation? Yes, Your Honor. In which case, Mr. Witness, you would agree that Mr. Sang, in this case, assuming you have other cases when he made those comments afterwards, at least in this case he made the comments when the visitor was still at the studio. Isn't it, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Witness. Mr. Witness, looking at the first part of the audio, could you confirm a couple of things that I've just taken you through that Mr. Sang said? Uh, the first one is Mr. Sang says they will accommodate all political parties. Yes, Your Honor. 
uh, and that is contained in Ken D11 0091 extending to Ken D11 0132. Could you also confirm that Mr. Sang, at the introduction, said that what he was broadcasting on that day was paid for by PNU? Yes, Your Honor. Could you confirm that both in the first transcript, uh, the first audio that I played, D11 and the one at page 33, D11 Mr. Sang says that the station will remain available for everybody to come and air their position. Yes, Your Honor. You also said that nobody will take away your vote from your pocket, isn't it, in both instances? Yes, Your Honor. You also said that he, the station will be available to enable the population understand and make informed choices on the 27th of December 2007 when they go to cast their votes. I can I confirm your honor, but no, no written text, your honor. Uh, Mr. Witness, if you look at page three, Ken D eleven zero one three zero zero one three zero zero nine two. Are you there, Mr. Witness? Page three. Yes, Mr. Witness. Mr. President, as that is being done, I request for a correction in the transcript, page 74, page 73, line 18 to 19. And the question I put to the witness was that the, the forts belonging to the, the forts will not be removed from the pockets of the population. Votes, V-O-T-E-S. Now, Mr. Witness, at page three, you will confirm at paragraph two that this is what Mr. Sang said. Our task is to give them a chance to present their views for us to, pre for us to present ours. This is just a talking. No one is going to forcefully remove your foot from your pocket Therefore, let us just listen so that on 27th December, we will vote according to knowledge you have acquired. Is that correct, Mr. Witt? Yes, Your Honor. And so you confirm the date which you said was not there. Is there actually there, indicating the date of the elections, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Two last questions on that issue, Mr. Witness. Could you confirm which to the best of your recollection, you say you knew a bit of Mr. William Kirwa from what you had. Could you confirm which political party he belonged to? He was in Vienna, Your Honor. And could you confirm which political party Mr. Ruta belonged to? ODM, your party, Your Honor. And Mr. Witness, what you had at page 33 was an attack on Mr. William Kirwa, telling him in the Kalenjin audio that you had that if the station is unable to host anybody better than him, then the station should either play music or close up. Did you see that, Mr. Witness? Do you recall that? 
I had, I had my own. And could you confirm, Mr. Witness, that Mr. Sang defended Mr. William Kirwa saying, let everybody have his day? I confirm, Your Honor. Mr. President, I would like to move on to something different. Mr. Witness, you said that Mr. Sang used the, na the word capture left, did you? Yes, Your Honor. Spell. Could you confirm that the spelling of capture left is K A P C H E L I T? Yes, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Witness, you clearly are knowledgeable. You, you have uh, explained yourself as understanding Kalenjin culture and Kalenjin history. Could you tell the court again, did you say Kapchalit is a reference to the Kikuyus? I didn't say. Tosho Sang was, not, was mentioning to them. Instead of saying Kikuyu, you could use Kapchalit on. That's what I said. And Mr. Witness, your understanding is that that word makes reference to Kikuyus. That's what I'm asking you. He was referring to Kikuyus as capitality on. Now, Mr. Witness, I, played, I want to play to you an audio where that word is used. Uh, that is at tab number 17 in our bundle, your honors. Uh, that is... Ken the audio is Ken D eleven zero thirteen zero zero three nine and I would like to play timestamp three eighteen to five zero zero the transcription is at page uh, tab 17 and is Ken D11 013 I'll say it again. Ken D11 0013 I'll play the audio. Uh, Mr. Witness, I'll give you the document containing the transcription. I want you to listen as you follow with the document and then I'll ask you a few questions. Mr. Witness, we will play the audio. If you could follow, we are looking at page two, Mr. Witness, where it starts with the words interlude. And that is for the court record, Ken D11 0013 to Ken D11 sponsored Sponsored Kugibin did not talk, Negal big sides, or a bit Kongalal and a leg, Chitin Yege, Akit, Nagamajikum, Mowa, Kogi, Puruyat of Kongin, and Angubiga, Kenya. Kunguna was take your Engoskalunguta, Branigora, 
Otinye tetu cheta basai takenge ni noto ko api chaka gonex sponsorship ana chaka sponsor kibindi ana chaka guru kibindi ni ko ke gurege kurege kibaki tena kibaki tena ko noto ko nyu otinye taeng studio che agenge ko noto ko bunu kebebera tak na mejuku mwa wait missing en ko mastage ko age ko chito ko stay ke gora no ngin ko meji asobit ko gonech imanda en ko mastage asiyi ko sengaleju ko yigi mwa jito ko lenjin ko lenyanja yit ke gas Tetiene le gose tukul awo inglet ku nyine itile kit negetel ko gunoto amja ta yene tukul limite ka ene ngu jishwa rap sang en studio kemi ak poyot germaya aram ngetich akarebu germa sigat pike ap kolegi no team mo ge ko mye kongoi rap sang eh termian mr witness could you confirm if you recognize the voice of the person who has been speaking before the the one who just immediately started jishwa sang yon and do you recognize the voice of the next person? I don't recognize your one. I will request you to listen to it a little more. Nga tich ko bun gitali barata ak bomet. Ko amaje angalal gi ko to kiku pi ak kolenjin akobo story nebo. Ko eh kolenjin ak pi ak ka mama je gi ke min tugul en betu ke jang ak en bonno to se ki usir to je jang. Kongo missing kwa ya chermara mgeti kuhu na tosti kwa kiga sing toki na tab ngalalet ku kamwa gulengolole epi gap college in akpi gap kama ma anagure epi galau epi gap kuilegen anan kuhai na tangu week ingpi chigi kamwa gule minga teta epi gap kuhu week akpi gap college in kuto bage kenam kar tiang na teta epi mani uru agi kaga kubata uru agu inguni koko mi studio kora est kosto indenyo imbetabrani otinye mwana historia ni ingen ngalega bi story ni noto mi chuku kongongwe chek chek historia na bai man ni togu not ni noto ko eng sirutik ak eng chigile ni mi to stoy kyo si mwawe ko yot historia ni ingen nga mastani ni kenyuru as historia ni mwana historia ni ingen na gine nguritit ko mye ago noto amunesu ko mi yu imbetabrani pasta pita chemaswet ni ni ndat ko meling ko ngolol dojin bi gap ki baki tena ndagi ni gonu historia ne chulat e ngoret ni ngendoy ko wuyigi genay e historia je chang ci ko mowej agobo tugu anan pi ke tertie jin ge metap kenya karu basta agata bi gap ko lenjin am gana da kristo la cham gay subay porur gi da ko lenjin tugul na molomi mr witness do you recognize the voice of this new person i i recognize pastor chemas what you want Thank you, Mr. Witness. I just want to go on a little more. I will request you to keep a very close uh, ear for the word capture that you have referred to, then I'll ask you a few questions. Thank you. Can you respond to my sweat to the ring? Uh, Mr. Witness, could, could you confirm that the spelling of Pastor Jama Sweat is this? Pastor is the usual pastor. Jama Sweat is C H E M A S W E T. I confirm you. Uh, please, Mr. Witness, listen. Kongo missing. Kuna to stick your guitar stand to Tabrani. A Muguiga Mora let it to Kununi. Kuibuech kibaki tena kote tu tena ko na ragial side sawa bit konga lalda inga leju ako kama alugora kwa tindo boro indo chama ina tukol kwa jige side jiungo la aljibi kumwa ngalek chigiri wigi ni nyone abuati alagiri kumwa gile kibi age choko kwa side ko chama itap kado kote gega nyogora engu mustap ODM Kenya ODM kwa lagi jek kabeber tanyo kungo la aljibi kosto ikiyo eng ngalek kita setai gemon ak magenwa ak pasyon kiterjin ko ni berani ku ga moy boy taram ngeti ko kigera ko boy historia ne bobi kyo ak pigap ko ilegen eng rani tege chemo kora sigiro historia no bigap ko ilegen ak pigap kap some historia no bigap ko lenjit ak pigap kap kongai anan kap kolosia ak pigi terter ki lagi ni mesen ko ga meje giro historia ne bobi kyo ak pig chemo kin ge ngi ro koro Amu mili ang mga gero, yun tukol, yun kung magitari ka lupa kapulo siya kartama. Mr. Witness, I will ask you to kindly confirm that this is a fair translation of what you just heard. 
first, the first one is the second last paragraph at page two, which says, yes, dear listener, thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is the time for our program this evening. As I told you yesterday, dear listener, we continue to listen to programs by those who paid for airtime in order to speak about their aspirations or things we need to know. Could you confirm, Mr. Witness, if that's a fair translation of that first paragraph? I confirm, Your Honor. The next paragraph. So today I have one of the sponsored programs. By sponsored, we mean those programs whereby individuals have paid for airtime so as to discuss issues that they wish to share with you, either as Kalenjin people or as people of Kenya. So this evening, dear listeners, I will be running a one-hour session sponsored by a team that calls themselves Kibakitana. Can you see that, Mr. Witness, and could you confirm it's, it's fair translation? I confirm, Your Honor. For the record, Kibakitana is Kibaki is K-I-B-E-B-A-K-I, -E -I, and Tena is T-E-N-A. Mr. Witness, this is the next paragraph. As such, I have with me here at the studio guests from the region, from that region, and they wish to represent that side. And we also have someone else to represent the other side, so that we can get to know the truth. And after listen, and after listening, after all, someone has said that the year is a lake. You can then make an informed choice. So I would like to welcome you wherever you may be th tuned in. My name is Joshua Arapsa. Could you confirm if that's a fair translation? I confirm, Your Honor. The next paragraph here. Yeah. Council also remember to read with moderate speed. I do not know whether you already gave the text to the court reporter, but even so, it's always good to pace so that they can catch up, as well as interpreter as well. And witness also remember to give that pause in the uh, question, the end of the question, and your beginning to answer it. I apologize, Mr. President. I'll be slow. Mr. Witness, could you confirm if this is a fair translation also? I confirm, Your Honor. Here at the studio, we have Jeremiah Arab Ngetich. Welcome, Jeremiah. Greet the Kalenjin people and tell us more about yourself. Is that a fair translation? Yes, Your Honor. Ngetich, for the record, can you spell, please? Mr. Witness, could you confirm that Ngetich is N G with an apostrophe on top, E T C. Sorry, may, may I say it again? N G with an apostrophe on top, E T I C H. I confirm you. And then he says, this is Jeremiah Ngetich from Kibomet, Kitale. I wish to speak with the Kalenjin people about the history of the Kalenjin people and the people of Kamama, into brackets Kikuyus, with whom we have lived over many, many decades. Is that correct, Mr. Witness? Yeah, there is no bracket, but it, the, the words you have spoken is correct. Mr. Witness, so, so what you're saying is that the words in brackets are not in Kalenjin, but the rest are a fair translation. Um, Your Honor, I'm saying that there is nothing which has been put to bracket here. The, the English version, Mr. Witness, if you see page four on top, can you see? You can't see. I was reading the Kalenjin version, Your Honor. Oh, yeah, I appreciate what you're saying. So what you're saying is that the English translation as Kikuyu into brackets, which is not there in the Kalenjin transcription, isn't it? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, for the record, Kibomet is K-I-B-O-M-E-T, and then Kitale. And Kamama is K A P and then MAMA, M-A-M-A. -A. Mr. Witness, the next paragraph. Thank you very much, Elder Jeremiah Ngetich. As such, dear listeners, you have heard the focus of the talk, as he has indicated. He will speak about the relationship among the Kalenjin and the Kikuyu communities. 
right from pre-independence through post-independence to date. Is that a fair translation, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Then the next paragraph. We also have here with us, dear listeners, a historian who knows much about history and is going to unfail to us a true known history according to historical records and research so that the elder can tell us his version of the history and the historian can also give us his insightful views. That's the reason he is here today, Pastor Peter Chamaswet. Is that a fair translation, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. The next paragraph, Mr. Witness, at page 5, Ken D11-0013029. He is to this effect. He is not speaking on behalf of Kibaketana, rather, he is here to give us a clear history as he knows it, just like he has given us other historical exposes about many things or other different peoples of Kenya. Welcome, Pastor. Do you confirm, Mr. Witness? I confirm, Your Honor. And uh, Pastor Chamaswet says this. I greet the Kalenjin community in Jesus Christ's name, saying hi. Greetings, Kalenjin people, wherever you are. I confirm, Your Honor. Then Mr. Sang says, thanks a lot. Thus, dear listeners, we will proceed with today's program in the manner I had indicated earlier, that this program has been sponsored by Kibaki Tena. They have bought airtime in order to pass across their message. I had also indicated that every party has the opportunity to buy airtime in order to pass across their message to the people. Is that fair, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. Then, Mr. Witness, next week, I believe that we can tell you that Kadu has bought airtime and we will still, we are still waiting for ODM Kenya and ODM to do the same, so as to speak with the people of Kenya, um, so as to speak with the people about current affairs, their aspirations and activities. Is that fair, Mr. Witness? Yes, Your Honor. And lastly, Mr. Witness, as Eldang Etich has said, today we are exploring the historical background of our interaction with the people of Koilegel, Mount Kenya, the Kikuyu. We will make efforts so that we can, in future, explore the history of the Kikuyu with Kapsome, the Luo, and the history of Kalenjin with Kapkongai, Kapkulusia, the Luya. However, we are primarily interested in the history of our people's interaction. Sorry to interrupt you, but you see a lot of gaps in the transcript so far that you need to be spelling those words where you encounter them. It will be difficult to read first and go back and fill them in. You did not spell it. But you Mr. President, I can spell them. Spell them when you encounter them. I, I, I'll do that, Mr. President. I, I will I'll read that paragraph again, Mr. Witness, that last paragraph. As Elder a teacher said, today we are exploring the historical background of our interaction with the people of Koilegel, Mount Kenya. Koilegel is spe spelled K-O-I-L-E-G-E-L, -E -E the Kikuyu. We will make efforts so that we can, in future, explore the history of the Kikuyu with Kapsome, the Lua. Kapsome is K-A-P-S-O-M-E. And the history of the Kalenjin with Kap Kongai stroke Kap Kulusia. The, sp the spelling Kap Kongai is K A P K O N G apostrophe A 
I. Cap Clusia is K, A, P, K, U, L, U, S, Y, A. The lawyer. However, we are primarily interested in the history of our people's interaction with those groups with political aspirations because I do not think we will be able to complete the different histories of 42 tribes. Mr. Witness, the audio went that far. Could you confirm if that is a fair translation of what you heard? It is, Your Honor. Now, Mr. Witness, you recall that our interest was in the use of the word capture. Let you recall that, Mr. Witness. Yes, Your Honor. Could you confirm that you have seen the use of that word at page 6, Ken D110130295 in the Kalenjin transcription, and that you also heard it when you listened to the audio? I didn't understand anything by the writings or the audio, Your Honor. Do you want the audio played again so that you see if you can trace that word, Mr. Witness? What I'm trying to say, Your Honor, is that I didn't understand what the meaning of the word, the words which have been used here were for. But I understood what was the meaning of capitalism at that time. What Joshua Sang was using actually at that time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Witness. So, all, all I just want you to confirm for the record is that you've seen the use of the word capitulate in this audio, both in terms of listening to it and in terms of the transcription that I've just given you. Could you confirm you've heard it and you've seen it? I confirm, Your Honor. Mr. Keegan Katwa, it's one o'clock. Yes, Mr. President, I can resume at in the afternoon. Yes, we will be rising for the uh, lunch break. Uh, the blinds will come down and witness um, escorted from the courtroom. Yes.